So for this example, instead of vinyl cutting, we actually want to print this particular job. So how do we do that? We go up to the top here, there's a rip and print icon, you click on that, and it starts the rip and print menu. And again, this is the width of the vinyl, paper, whatever media we have in our printer. Again, we have the small icon here with the question mark, and if our cables and, and uh, printer allow it, we can actually communicate and ask it what is the actual width of that printer uh, printer media and what will happen is it will come back with user defined and some kind of uh, number in here showing the actual width so it's a good idea to click that to make sure you have enough width of vinyl for your job again you have a mirror here if you want to print it for the inside of the window you have send now put it on the hold list that's what I'm going to do because I don't have a printer connected right now you can fit it to the media make sure again that you change this back to hundred percent Otherwise, uh, the next job is going to be 150% or whatever that number happened to be. All right, now, the next tab is paneling. Again, this is a, not a bad idea to use in a couple of ways. Uh, if, you, if your graphic is really large and, and it has to be printed in panels, uh, you will see those panels on here automatically. And you can right-click to turn off the panels, print one, adjust your media, print the next one, so forth and so on. The dotted line in between, again, is the amount of overlap between panels. But if your graphic is uh, will fit on that page, it's also not a bad idea to maybe uh, shrink this down. Like if you're concerned about colors and and uh, whether an image is going to uh, you know be pixelated and so forth, it's not a bad idea to just shrink that down. Maybe something like this. And then if I go back to my main page, it'll print just that portion at full size. And that's a great way to kind of preview to see if the color is going to come out right, if it's going to have pixelization and so forth. That's kind of a, a good indication to kind of see what's going to happen uh, before you actually print the whole job. Go back to panel and I'll reset that so the whole job will print. The third tab is where we have to be very careful. I'm going to click on options and you notice right now it's set to no color correction and then I also have use color correction. This particular printer has profiles. That's what actually controls the amount of ink and the color quality that you're getting. So I want to use color correction whenever I can. When I look in here and look at my profiles, I don't see any profiles, right? I just have these selections to make here. If there are profiles, output profiles for this particular printer for Flexi, then what we'll need to do is install those. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to click done here. I'm going to turn on my cloud features. And right, this is one of the advantages of the cloud uh, capabilities. I actually can go to printer profiles right here. Remember, uh, the printer I'm using is that uh, Muto uh, 1638, right? ValueJet 1638. So I'm going to go back here and then click on printer profiles. That's going to start my uh, internet connection. So you need an internet connection for this. Starts my browser. I go to my Muto here. I go down to my 1638 and I simply download those profiles. So that's going to download it for me. It'll take a second or two to download, but it's going to actually place those on my hard drive. Now, once you have that uh, profile downloaded, just use uh, WinZip or some file to open it up. It's, a, it's in a zipped format, so you're going to open it up like this. I'm using WinZip, and there's the actual folder that has all of the profiles in it. Let's extract that to the desktop. Okay, so we'll close that off. So that actually put a folder on the desk, desktop that has all the MUTO uh, profiles in it. So we're going to go back to our uh, rip and print menu and make sure that we're on our uh, profile lister, that third tab. Again, use color correction. And you'll see where it says output profile. There's nothing there. We're going to click on add. And what that's going to do is we can actually go to our desktop we can look for that folder, which you'll see the name is the MUTO here. Double click on that, and you'll see all the profiles in that folder. I'm going to click on the first one, and then do Control A to actually select all of those, and just click Open. And it'll take a few seconds for those to load into Flexi, but what will happen is it'll put them in the right folder, in the right location on the hard drive, so that uh, the next time you use your printer, uh, you'll never uh, have to do this again. They'll all be there ready for you to use. 
All right, so once that happens, you'll then see the profiles will be loaded, and these are all the profiles that are available for that particular machine at this time. They add them all the time, so you might want to check that. But you just pick the profile that you're going to need, and you're going to see, again, that it's very easy to do now. Now we actually have the correct profiles for all the medias that are appropriate for this particular machine. In fact, let's go ahead and send the job. We'll just click Send here. And what it will do is it'll actually transfer that job to the production manager. You can actually see that it's on hold here. That's a nice thing. It actually shows you the status of that particular job. We'll go over to production manager. We can click done there if you want. Go over to production manager and open that up. And you'll see in your printer queue, here's the name of, and the information about the job, the size, and so forth. And here it is in the printer queue. I'm going to double click on that. And that'll bring up a uh, sort of a job manager screen, I guess you would say, that kind of shows you uh, what the job is. It allows you to make some further changes. All of this discussed in detail in uh, the appropriate uh, training uh, part of the training DVD. Uh, but in any case, once it's there, it shows you the preview. This is called the whole queue. What has to happen now is the, the uh, colors have to be translated from the RGB colors of the monitor to the CMYK colors of your printer. So that's called ripping the file. Uh, if I just hit send, it'll go through the rip and then it'll go through the send, or I can just drag that file into my rip queue over here. And what you'll see is, again, it'll be processing. It may take a few moments to do that, depending on the size of the file, uh, how many elements are in it, and so forth. But in any case, um, it will process that entire file, and that's called ripping the file. Now what happens in this case is I, I actually put that file on hold, so that's why I could drag it and drop it into this queue. In, in most cases, you may just hit the send button. It will automatically go to the hold queue for a moment, and then it will automatically trip over into the rip queue, and then automatically into the print queue. I'm not going to move this into the print queue because I don't have a printer to print with, but normally that would be the process. But what's nice is you can you can literally put it on hold and kind of check things out, make sure your printer's okay, make sure that uh, you have plenty of ink, that the media is loaded correctly, do all those things. If you put it on hold first in the uh, production manager, that's kind of nice. Then you just drag it over into the queue here, or if you drag it all the way to the print queue, it would rip and then it would just start printing. Uh, kind of a nice way to kind of manage your files. So once you get used to this, it's a very easy process. The basic process is I have a file. I go to my print, rip and print menu up here. I make the appropriate changes to all of my uh, color management and size and copies and whatever it is I'm going to do, right? Then I'm going to hit send, and then it's going to transfer that file over to my production manager. And my production manager will either immediately start printing that file, or if I put it on hold, I can drag and drop it all the way up to the print queue. I'll go ahead and do that in this case. And then what it'll do is it'll actually process the file here in the rip. And in, and in this case, because I, uh, I, I was dragging that file all the way up to the print queue, it's going to process it, and as soon as it finishes that, it will immediately transfer it to the print queue. That is printing with ease, and that's what Flexi is all about. Printing, cutting, designing with ease. Be sure and watch the What's Next video, because there's some very important information on there.